Hi, welcome to the course of Sussman. My name is Monica Winzang and I'm a teacher at the University College of Agricultural and Environmental Education. As a part of my work, I'm also specialized in research and development projects on school and adult education topics in the areas of communication, climate education and sustainability. Hello, welcome. From my side, I'm a colleague of Monica. My name is Willy Linda, and today we would like to discuss about our footprints and our responsibilities. If you drive to Vienna Airport, you will see large posters that read, Our airport is climate neutral and therefore sustainable. This is astonishing. Vienna is a large airport, 30 million passengers, 220,000 takeoffs and landings a year. It's supposed to be climate neutral. A second look explains a second look explains how how this is possible. The airport, for example, the building uses energy from renewable sources, but the aeroplanes and the fuel consumptions is not included in this calculation. As we can see, whether the airport is sustainable or not depends on how you look at it. This example leads us to the question: How do you measure sustainability correctly? In kilograms of CO2, in, in numbers of insects in the forest, or in euros? And this is a good question, but first to the airport. Of course, every contribution, every single initiative is important. But it is a question of prioritization. The German environmental researcher Michael, Michael Bilhardt says we have to prioritize the key points and not the peanuts. The key points for an airport are probably the aeroplanes. The solar plant is peanuts in this comparison. We have to look at the big picture. Scientists have been working on developing this big picture view for more than 30 years. There are different answers and no universally one. And this brings us to sustainability indicators. One of the best known indicator is the ecological footprint, which was developed 30 years ago by Wackernagel, Ries, two scientists. It is based on a very simple idea. All resources used by humans, be it food, raw materials, but also waste products and emissions, such like carbon dioxide, are tied to land. There are about 14 billion hectares of bioproductive land which is available on our Earth. This includes forests, grasslands, fields, productive marine areas. These areas cannot be expanded. We don't have a second Earth. It's a central statement of this concept. There are currently living about 8 billion people on our planet, which means statistically each person has 1.8 hectares for their disposal, so a little bit less than 2 hectares. In quite complex analysis, Researchers determine how much land is required to produce one kilogram of grain, one kilogram of meat, but also to neutralize the emissions of the car truck. On this basis, the average per capita footprint of a country is calculated. For Austria, it's currently six hectares, three times as much as a statistically just tolerant. What is to blame for the fact that our footprint is so large? What does it have to do with climate change? And of course, the important question, what can we do? The most important reason for the size of our footprint is the energy consumption. 
we need a lot of land to bind carbon dioxide. And this land does not exist. The climate crisis is a direct consequence of our footprint being, being too large. Also, the extinction of species. We have no room for forests to bind CO2, no room for other living creatures. The footprint shows us two things. Firstly, where we can do something ourselves. The most important part, about one third of the footprint, is caused by our diet. Eating a lot of meat results in a very large footprint. Then, of course, mobility, especially driving and flying. Finally, housing, where heating and air conditioning has an impact. And then the rest, fashion items, electronics, and so on. However, it is also important to consider the gray footprint. This is the part that we cannot attribute to individuals, but is caused by public institutions. It amounts about one third of the total footprint. So think about it. Two hectares would be the limit. One third of six hectares yeah, are two. So the gray footprint is already as large as our footprint should be. The personal footprint can be changed by our personal behavior. The gray footprint only by getting involved. Reduce the footprint, increase the hand is therefore a motto. Probably the most frequently mentioned objective of dealing with the ecological footprint in class is to promote the ability to critically analyze the ecological footprint of one's personal lifestyle and to derive measures from this in order to make one's life more sustainable. It can assess for myself, how far I am from a sustainable lifestyle away and where my actions, my fields of actions. Let's sum it up. Key figures show us whether we are on the right path to a sustainable future. And one of these is the ecological footprint, which shows us how far away we are from an environmentally friendly way of life.